Hi! In today's video I want to show you around the development environment from Phytek for the Phytek products and I will use it to cross compile a library for the Fibot session which you can see in on my webcam here on the right bottom side. So let's start. As you may have noticed this is not my main system so here I'm running a virtual machine. And first let me show you where you can get this virtual machine from. So here I am on Phytech's web page and I have selected the Fibot session. And here in the download section, we can download virtual machine images. So here we have various SDKs and for each SDK we can download the image of a virtual machine. And then you just have to import it in your virtual machine um, program, whether it's VirtualBox, QMU or maybe for M player, I don't know. And you just have to import it and then you can run this virtual machine. And I've prepared my Firebot session with by using the um, SD card image for this SDK. And you can find this here under software Yocto Linux mainline kernel. This is the release I got the virtual machine for from. And if I click on it here, um, down here we have a binary section with a link to the images. So I have this board here and here you can see all the available files. For example, this file here is the SD card image for a minimal yeah, system on my fiber session. Okay, so now let me show you around the virtual machine. So here on the desktop you can see there are a lot of links already available here. So here we have some starters to start a serial terminal to our board. We have a link to the documentation. We have Eclipse installed. If you prefer developing with Eclipse, I won't use it today, but if you prefer to use it, you can use it here. And we have some Hello World examples, which are already on the system to help you get up and running with the SDK. But these are only links. So all these links um, are located here in our slash opt folder. So once again, here we have our Hello World um, examples. We have our Eclipse installation. And here we have the wallpaper, which is shown here on the screen. And here we have the sysroot folder. This is important because this is again an Arago package, which contains everything we need to compile applications for our Firebot session. So here in this case, we have the compiler, the linker, and all the necessary tools to build this. And this script will be important later too. This is the environment setup Cortex A72HF because this script will prepare our development area. So if we source the script, it will set up the compiler and all the flags which are needed to compile software for this board and this will make it quite convenient to use. Okay, so yeah, that's the first look around. So now let's try to cross compile a, uh, a library by using this setup here. And I've chosen to compile the open 6251 library once again. So let me go to the open 6251 web page, click on download and download the latest release. Okay, done. And let me go back to the terminal. I have created a programming folder here and in this folder I will untar this the source code from open 62541 and navigate into it so here we have this and now the next thing is I will set up my environment therefore I will use source and I will source the screen um, opt environmental setup cortex a70 and so on and so forth and now if I execute um, echo dollar cc we have all, so this variable is set with our compiler. So this is the compiler we will use for building software for our board. And it's already set up correctly. For example, here is our target CPU, which we want to use. And this is a Cortex-A7, which is here on my Firebot session, for example. And we have a bunch of more compiler flags here. Okay, now the next step is to build our library. So I will create a new folder I will call build. Let me CD into it. And then I will have to run CMake, but I will set some options and I have to look them up. So first I will enable this amalgamation option to create an open 6251.c and .h file. 
and I can do this with D, the flag, and I will set it to on. And I also want to com cross compile a shared library, so I will need to use the flag build shared libraries equals on. CMake will take the compiler directly from this CC variable. So let's run this. And I guess our variables are set as well. For example, this is our linker, for example, and in this way, all the programs are set. Okay, so now CMake was yeah successful and we should have a make file here. So let's build the library. So this will take a little time. Now it's linking the shared library. And we're done. So we have built our shared library and we've created the files open6051.c and .h. But is the shared library really built for ARM v7? Let's check this. So I will use read out for this with the minus h for headers option. And I will pass in the file bin lib open6251.so, which is our shared library. And we can see here this is of 32 bit and it's for ARM. So this is really a cross compiled library. Okay, so now the next step is we have to compile a sample program. So let's do this. Therefore, I will navigate into my examples folder and here I have a file called server.cpp and this is what I will use. So let's take our compiler, which is behind the CC variable. Our input file is server.cpp. Then I have to pass in the path to our include um, file, which is open 62541 or maybe let's open it up first. So here we are including open 6251 1.h, the file we've created, and this is a really minimal server adding a variable with the name the answer and the value 32 to our server, to our OPC UA server. Okay, so let's try to cross compile this. So our input file is server.cpp. Our include path is in the build directory. And I also want to um, compile the open 62541.c file and our output should be my server static. I forgot a space here. So let's run this. So now these two files will be compiled. This will take a little while. Okay. And now I want to compile um, this a second time, but this time against the shared library. So I don't need this here, but instead I have to tell the compiler where it can find the shared library and this is in build slash bin. So let's run this. Oh, oh, yeah, I forgot to set tell the library I want to use. So the library is the lib open 62541. Okay, and this compilation was much quicker because it didn't have to recompile open 6251.c. And if I take a look at the two files I've created, you can see the one linked against the um, shared library is much smaller than the one which is compiled with the open 6251.c file. Okay, next step is we have to copy everything on our fiber sessions. Therefore, I will use CP. And I will cp my server star to root user bin. And I have to specify the address of my fiber session. So I have connected it to my router. So let's copy this. Done. And I also have to copy the library, so the shared library. So build bin lib open6251so. And I will copy this to um slash lib okay done so now let me connect to my fiber session over ssh okay here i'm on my fiber session and to um, update the sh the libraries which are available i have to run ldconf and now i can run my server my server 
static first and now you can see the server starts. So let me open an OPC UA client and let's connect to it. And you can see we are connected to the server and we have our the answer node in the object folder and the value is 32. So this is working. Now let's also test our shared um, library. So I will shut it down with control C and then I will start my server dynamic. So the server is up and running too, but this time the shared library was loaded in the background. And if I um, run or if I connect again, okay, <laughs> this was strange. Yes, it terminated. Okay, let me try to do this again. Connect. Yeah, now I'm connected and I can also see we have the answer in here and the value is 32. Okay, cool. So that's how to cross compile a library and an application for the Firebot session by using Phytex SDK. I hope you've enjoyed the video and learned something. If you want to support my work, you can buy my coffee and buymycoffee.com slash for Linux. So that's it for today. Thanks for watching and goodbye.